All right, good afternoon, everybody. It is 1.30 Central, so we will get started. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to today's webinar, Bovine and Swine Artificial Insemination, Learning the Ins and Outs of Teaching AI and Interactive Simulator with Interactive Simulators. My name is Emily Winnestroffer. I am on the marketing team here at RealityWorks. I will be behind the scenes assisting our lead presenter today, Jamie McIntosh. Jamie is one of our product managers here at RealityWorks. He has been with us for a little over nine years and came to us with an extensive education background as a former educator that taught in Wisconsin and in Colorado. His topics cover student engagement, technology in the classroom, gaming, filling the skills gap, business education, and various agriculture and welding topics. He is a great resource for today's webinar. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pass things over to Jamie to get us going. All right, thank you very much, Emily. I appreciate everyone for taking the time today. And again, like Emily said, um, this is a uh, presentation that I uh, want to, to help with and, and engage you. So if you have questions, feel free to put those questions in our chat section. We'll be happy to answer those questions for you as we go. But we want to get started in our focus today is talking about bovine and swine. And so to help us is we have our bovine uh, breeder here, which is in front of me. And then we also have our, our swine breeder as well here to be able to help kind of talk. And we're going to compare and contrast different features all for the purpose of trying to get you and your students to be able to see similarities, differences, and then get them engaged in, in how they're learning, and then also learning the skills of artificial insemination. So again, within this world that we're at, we're really focusing on getting students in agriculture, not only to understand what they're doing, but then also taking it a step further of learning the skill to actually do it. So start with, I have some engagement examples that we have here at RallyWorks. We have a lot of different egg education products here and really focus on um, levels for your students. So, for example, getting students to understand and get that skill development, knowing the anatomy of the animal. We have our uh, anatomy models, our, our uh, cow model, where it can be pulled apart where you can um, be able to see inside of the animal. You can see the reproductive system and get students to understand where those um, different features and, and landmarks on the uh, bovine are in our cow model. Now, if you want to go in deeper, we also have our cow uterus model. This is a life-size model um, that uh, uh, um, allows students to be able to open up and kind of a cross-sectional view, see inside the uterus, inside the reproductive tract of a bovine, allowing them to be able to see all the different parts and pieces, how it all fits together, and then again, landmarks of, that, of the animal. Then we also have, and what you see in front of us here today, a bovine breeder, getting them to actually do and to uh, simulate the, the real thing. Now, in the picture we have on the screen, you have it in black and white. You can also get in a brown model, depending on what your needs are, but allow students to engage by actually doing artificial insemination and learning the skills needed to do artificial insemination. <laughs> and then our newest product out on the market today is our bovine birthing and ultrasound simulator. This allows you to actually do uh, birthing and simulate birthing of a calf. So it comes with a calf, it comes with the back end of the uh, of a, uh, um, a bovine, allowing you to actually do different types and simulate different types of birthing, both techniques as well as different uh, positions that the calf may come out in, allowing students to get that learning um, before they actually do the real thing or, or are engaged with the animal in that way. Now, on the swine side, a lot of the same types of things here. We have our pig model, again, a, about one six size. It fits on a, a classroom table very nicely. You can open it up. You can see all the different features and, and parts of the animal. You can see the reproductive system and let students get and understand that world. <laughs> if you want to take it even deeper, we also have our pig uterus model, allowing students to be able to um, understand it. And again, cr uh, cross-sectional and cutaway areas to be able to learn all the different, uh, not only anatomy, but how it all functions together. And then our swine breeder here really has two purposes. One of them is it allows students to understand and learn the proper technique of artificial insemination, but it also allows you to do farrowing. And so we have piglets that come with it, and you can actually do the birthing process in that world as well. 
And then our newest product, again, just coming out this year is our swine litter processing simulator. These are piglets that allow you to do um, uh, tail cutting, allowing you to do um, teeth clipping and ear notching and castration, learning all these different swine litter processing features and needs that you have um, when a piglet is born. So all these are examples of ways that you can engage your students, get them to understand and to learn the process and the skills needed in that world. So let's dive right in here on bovine artificial insemination. Okay, <laughs> where I start with bovine, we'll go to swine in just a minute. So again, our bovine breeder, it is a realistic hind end of the cow. It allows you to do proper technique in artificial insemination. In this case here, it has a hide cover that can be brought down and placed in place so you can't see anything, but it also has great teaching ability where you can actually see inside and be able to focus on um, inside. One of our ag educators who's this again, talks about how it gives real life skills to help in the industry. And that's very important because this is as close as you can get to the real thing and learn that skill, gain confidence, have students gain confidence, understanding, and then also be able to start to process of how best to do the techniques that they're, they're being asked to do. We also bring very, we're very focused on um, being very realis realistic. We research and we do a lot of different types of, uh, um, of focus groups, as well as hands-on learning ourselves to make sure that what we're doing is correct. And it is something that brings as realistic a, uh, a product as possible. So getting into this world here, let's talk about a few things. Now, one of the compare and co contrast ways you could do it is talk about the differences of their, their cycles and what they're doing and, and what's happening. Now, in this case, you can see some differences between a lot of different animals. But one of the things that kind of come, brings out here is the difference of um, bovine having just you know, hours in their, their, um, their being able to be in heat where your swine are going to have a little bit more time. So you can compare and contrast. What does that mean for your students? How does that uh, differ? Do you have to be watching much closely for one or the other based on that knowledge that you have? Again, all this is things that come with our curriculum for these products as well. So Another focus here is looking at, okay, how you're actually doing the insemination. In this case, there are studies out there showing that where you actually deposit the semen, especially in cows, is going to be very important. You're going to see your levels of uh, kind of your positive levels of, of um, uh, pregnancy go up depending on if you're putting it and going in the right spot. So if you are putting it in the uterine body, you're going to have a much higher percentage than if you put it in one or the other horn. Now, you can talk through this. You can compare and contrast in that sense of, again, where you put the semen is then going to help or maybe hurt of actually getting that animal pregnant. Now, in our product here, one of the great features that we have is if you lift this open and you can see in bovine breeder here is we have our uh, rectum here, digestive tract. And then below it is our reproductive tract. Now you have your bladder down here and then you have it coming through. And in this area right here is your cervix that then leads into our, um, to our left and our right uh, um, uterine horns. Now, in this case here, our cervix, it has three rings. So when you go in there, you have to move and interact and be able to inter um, move around in there to be able to uh, manipulate and get through the cervix. And then it has a clear opening, allowing students to see, okay, did I actually go past the cervix and get to where I need to be? Now, in this, these three rings also can be turned and manipulated by you, the instructor, or the students, giving them a different understanding or a different cervix every single time they go in. So it's like having a different cow every single time. But these are important pieces to see, okay, how do I inseminate the cow? And then we're gonna talk about how you inseminate the pig in just a little bit. But what does all that mean? Is it much more difficult? Is there more skill-based? Is it less skill-based? Those are those kind of, kind of uh, contrasting things that you can work with. So 
let's walk through this a little bit here. So with our curriculum, it walks through and shows students how to uh, locate the reproductive tract, how to actually go in and remove the, um, the feces that are in here. So in our case here, I can actually come in here and I pull out, we actually have our poop bags, allowing students to be able to um, take these out or man maneuver them out of their way. So as they're actually doing the artificial insemination, they have to be working in that area. They have to be able to go underneath that and be able to reach down. And you can see where my hand is and reach down and, and find where the cervix is, find where all those different features are they're, that they're needing. Now, the other piece of this puzzle is actually doing the insemination. So we include with this, we actually send you our rubber or our uh, plastic gloves so students can actually put these on, be able to understand what that feels like, how does that uh, feel as they put their hand in, it changes the, the um, feeling and the texture and being able to actually grasp on and get to that cervix. Those are all features that are included in being able to help. It also then walks you through, okay, making sure, am I going at the right angle when I'm going in here? Because I could go down and go into the bladder. That's not what you want to do. You want to actually have it about a 45 degree angle, moving inside and going into the reproductive tract. I'm going to take my hand over the top here, but it allows then students to be able to go in and maneuver and manipulate through the cervix here moving and being able to get through all the way to the end. Now, as I poke in here, all of a sudden, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, at first I wasn't moving through. So I need to manipulate, move through. Once I get to the right position and I'm actually through, I can feel that in here. If I put my hand in through and go in, I can then grab, on. I can feel where the tip of that gun is. And then that is where if I've gone through and I can look or feel that, I understand that, yep, I'm in the right place and I can actually deposit the, the sperm. Now, all of that then allowing students to understand and learn by practicing. Again, engaging them into that understanding, that knowledge, giving them a lot of opportunity to learn about the reproductive tract and what's going on. So why is this important? And this goes back to our compare and contrast. We're seeing more and more animals get in, or, and, and farms and, and uh, uh, breeders get into artificial insemination. You can see um, bovine in a dairy world, they are largely artificially inseminated over natural breeding. Beef is in, continuing to increase. We're seeing more and more of, of uh, uh, beef cattle being um, uh, uh, inseminated as well. So on the swine side, it also has a very large number that is using artificial insemination to, um, to do the breeding. <laughs> In other animals, you can see there's some of that too. So you can compare, you can ask the question of, okay, why is it? Is it easier? Is it more cost effective? What are the, com the comparisons of doing this versus other animals? Why is it an equine? Why are horses um, bred less uh, and, and others... Uh, animals, what are the differences? Where do you see those things? Are there advantages or disadvantages that you can talk about and interact with? So I want to switch over to our swine artificial inseminator. So I'm going to just move our bovine breeder here, and I'm going to bring our swine inseminator over onto our table. Again, these are um, able to put on a table, in this case, with our swine, it can be put on the floor. This has the back, so you can actually sit on the back. You could be able to maneuver and, and, and move around with your legs on the back of this. It allows you to be able to do that. Um, one of the things that we have in here is we have the reproductive tract. It comes with a, um, a pipette here for you, a, a catheter to be able to put in here. One of the differences about this product is that as we um, show here, it also comes with two different reproductive tracts, one of them being the insemination reproductive tract. The other one is a farrowing reproductive tract. It comes with two piglets, allowing you to be able to actually switch our reproductive tracts from the AI tract to the farrowing one and actually push the piglets up, have students be able to do different types of uh, understanding and, and training on birthing with their um, 
with the piglets. Now, in this case here, this back end here um, allows you to be able to, like I said, sit on, interact with it, being able to um, have students learn the, the proper technique. On one side, you can't really see over to see what's happening inside. The other side, you can come over and you can actually see inside here where we have the cervix here. It is clear so you can see inside what's going on. And then it also has a, um, a tube coming all the way in. So when you do artificial insemination, you can use your catheter and you can um, uh, hook up um, to a water source in this case and actually have the water go through using a bucket to catch that as it goes out, but give students that understanding of what's going on, how long they have to artificial inseminate and be able to understand. Now, with this, a lot of our curriculum focuses on the reproductive tract and then how to AI. So in this case, it's very important. It talks through and it teaches students about the different parts so they can actually go and understand where are the ovaries? How do they sit in the, the animal? What is the importance of each one of them? So it goes through all the different reproductive tract features of them and how long um, and, and um, uh, where they are located in all this uh, um, inter interaction when you're actually artificial insemination. So we also talk about the tools and then the technique. So in this case here, we have our uh, spiral shaped plastic tip ins uh, insemination rod here. This allows you to actually show students how to do this, allowing them to go in. Now, in this case here, you can go in and go all the way up and all of a sudden I feel the pressure. Okay, I'm at the cervix. Now, what do I need to do? So again, with that, you can start to turn it uh, counterclockwise and you can feel the pressure and you allow it to keep on turning until, until the pressure stops it from turning anymore. In this case here, you can then see inside and you can see how far it went up and is it ready? Are you in the right place? Did you go ahead and do that? Now, we also talk about, and you can um, use a uh, catheter, a foam tip um, uh, catheter here and go that route. We also, you can also use a post cervical catheter. So it allows you to do different types of um, techniques or use different types of tools while inseminating. Now, again, let's stop for a compare and contrast moment here. This is a great point to talk through students when you are able to walk through the artificial insemination of bovine um, and understanding that you have to, you know, insert your hand, find the cervix, you have the, the percentage of chances of actually making sure you get past the cervix, inseminating, and then what is your percentage of, um, of being able to actually inseminate and impregnate that animal? You then go into this world of uh, swine. And in this case, you don't have to go inside. You don't have to put your hand inside the animal, all right? You're able to go up right to the cervix and then twist and be able to go in. But there's also some differences that um, are, are there as well when we talk about the AI technique, all right? So the amount of times that you can inseminate, how often you can do it um, is important. The animal, when it's in heat, all right, it has a standing heat, it's ready to go. Is that the same or different as the, the bovine? Um, being able to make sure you're putting in the correct um, angle, being able to sit on the animal, helping it to kind of get excited and ready to be um, impregnated. Those are all things that you can do where, again, a contrast to the, the, um, uh, the bovine. Now, the other thing here is how long it takes you to artificially inseminate. So for cows, you have your, um, your AI gun, you get to where you're ready to inseminate and you shoot and you put that uh, sperm into the um, uterine horn area and you're done. In this case, you usually will have to wait three to five minutes, allowing for the sperm over a period of time to be um, kind of taken in by the sow. And so those are differences to be able to understand, okay, what does that mean and how does that kind of interact or, or work for, um, for each animal? And why are there differences? What is it? And then how, how well do they adapt to that? And, and can you um, impregnate them in that world? So with all that said, 
and a lot of different um, options here for you and students being able to have hands-on activity we also include handouts for you. Now, this is something that you can use, but again, it really focuses and gets students thinking about the comparing and contrasting about different animals, how you take care of them, how you prep them, what you do for them as they are then interacting um, once they're pregnant or are getting ready to be pregnant. So a few handouts that we have that we want to um, share with you today. So one of the big things that we want to, and um, you to take with and our students to take with is not only um, how to do it, but the question is, why would you do this? And so we have a worksheet that talks through with bovine is the cost of artificial insemination. Really looking at and saying, okay, is it more cost effective to do natural breeding or to do artificial insemination? Allowing your students to really start to understand, okay, is there the, the business side, the cost side of this, why you would do it, what are some different reasons for you to do it? So we include this, um, this cost opportunity to kind of get students to understand and work through and calculate, okay, if this is uh, what I need or I'm going to do, What's the cost benefit analysis? Again, compare and contrast within that animal, within your herd. Okay, why would you do that? Is it because solely of um, it is a cost or is it something where it's genetics or because of the amount of, of uh, animals you have, it, there is um, more benefits or maybe less benefits? What are you looking for there? So we have handouts for you that we'll be sending along with this to give you that understanding and give your students those kind of not only is as much as important of the technique and understanding how to do it, but why would you do it? And what would those decisions be, be making for you? Those critical thinking type decisions. The other piece there is we have a, a, a technique um, activity sheet, allowing students to learn and make sure they understand the proper technique before they go and do it. Again, giving them the practice is, is a great tool for them, not only to understand how to do it, but actually to, to practice, get the experience of doing that simulation before they go out and do the real thing. Now, on the swine side of things, we do the same thing. And again, we are hoping you're seeing some ways you can compare and contrast your, with your students here, um, from one animal to another, from uh, swine to uh, cow to uh, uh, bovine or bovine to swine. But at the same time, it can also be some questions um, asking just about artificial insemination and compare and contrast within the, the animal itself. So we have a worksheet of advantages and disadvantages, kind of like with uh, the bovine. It's a question of not only do you know how to do it, but why would you do it? What are the reasons you would choose to do natural select, natural breeding or doing AI breeding? What are those differences? What are the similarities? And then how would you go about doing that? Now, again, allowing students to be able to understand, okay, by doing it one way or another, there's always going to be cost benefit analysis and giving them that opportunity to do that. Also, we have worksheets on proper uh, AI insemination. So allowing students to, again, go through, learn kind of in the, the book world, understand, visually understand it before they actually get on and do it in a simulated world. So we have those resources for you so then you can use those and be able to understand and have your students understand what they're doing, what the landmarks are, how to actually inseminate before they do the practice in the simulated world, hoping then to get them to the real world and then do it on the real thing. But gaining that confidence, gaining that understanding that they can get by doing it in that way first before they go and do, the, do it on the real thing. So we have a little time left here. Uh, thank you for taking the time today to learn and to hear about different compare and contrast. Um, we have resources, resources for you, but do you have any questions that we can um, uh, answer for you? We'd love to answer those questions if there's anything you have. Otherwise, we thank you for your time and taking the time with us. Hopefully, this has been a, a benefit for you that you can start seeing how you can use these products in the classroom, how you can get students to start thinking a little differently and comparing about what are similarities in, in artificial insemination, what are differences, how do I want to one day or, or if I get the chance to be able to do this, what are some of those things that they can then um, glean from, from these products? So. Jamie, a question just came in. How can they access the curriculum for the resources? Okay, great question. And in fact, 
I'm going to jump up here, jump out onto our website here, and I'm going to walk you right through that. Okay. And then, Jamie, while you're logging in, do you want to go over what everybody will be receiving after the webinar? Yeah. So what you will see receive is we have, and let me just, I got to switch my share here. Um, all right, here we go. So here is my new um, share here for you is this is our website. So yes, first off, um, the best way to get anything and, and to get a better understanding of any of our products is go to our website, realityworks.com. And that's where you can start kind of perusing and figuring out and finding different things in that world um, for you. But what you're going to get with this uh, today is you'll get this recording here for you. You'll get a, a completion certification and then you're saying that you took and you're a part of this. And then you also will get those handouts that you saw today on those pictures, the um, the uh, cost benefit analysis, the um, uh, advantages, disadvantages, the um, worksheet on how you can um, understand or, or in that sense, go through proper technique for both AI of swine and also of bovine. Those are the handouts that you'll get um, along with this in this world here. As I come to our website here, um, if you go um, to products over in agriculture, that is where you can see all of our different products that we have and, and especially uh, the products here, bovine, birth, uh, bovine breeder and also swine. Uh, breeder here. But if you want to go for our curriculum, all you need to do is we have the curriculum online here, go to our COVID-19 response, hit the learn more, and that will bring you to our resources here. As I scroll down, the webinar that you're seeing today will be here in our webinar area. Um, we also have free lesson plans on career exploration. And then in this case, program resources, our guides and curriculum. All you need to do is click on that. You fill out your information and you'll be given um, access to all of our curriculum, including our bovine and our uh, um, swine breeder curriculum there. And then, Jamie, along with the worksheets, will they be will be will they be receiving the answer keys as well? Hey, that's a great question because um, that can be a tough place. You want to have the answers. Yes, it will be uh, the worksheets, and then the answer keys come with it. So, a great feature for this is it is a worksheet. It's a PDF format. You can print it out as you want. It also then has the answer key for you, the teacher. I don't print it out for all the students, but print it out for yourself, and uh, you can use that. Yep. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in, Jamie. Okay, well, thank you for your time. I appreciate what you're doing. Um, way to get through and get to the end and, and push hard to the end of the uh, school year. You're doing great things. Thank you for all you're doing. And um, hopefully this was helpful for you as you look to engage and bring new opportunities to your students. Thanks for your time.